okay, okay, I'm in a bit of a rush. My friend just managed to find some bottle of Prime here in Australia, so I'm gonna go back to that same shop and see if they've still got some. We have Prime hydration in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> and it's important because the drink that KSI and Logan Paul, some of the top YouTubers across the US and UK, combine together to create. And they sell out every single time they release it. What was it? It was like 3 million bottles in a matter of hours in the US. And it was 50,000 in a matter of five minutes in the UK. And I couldn't even find it when I was in London. So maybe this is the chance. Australian summer. What on earth would I put a jumper on? It would go faster if people actually knew it was here. Success, but I'm more broke than I already was. So why would I spend such an exuberant amount of money on these bottles of knockoff Gatorade? Because can you guess what they came out to? Each one of these? $15 each, so $45 total. Let's do a proper review when I get home. So why am I willing to spend that much on just these three bottles? Doesn't it seem kind of a waste when you can get a Gatorade for a couple of bucks? And yes, that is true, but in Australia, we don't get anything. So to finally get something come our way, like I was trying to push for yesterday, my most popular video that I've uploaded so far, about the documentary that they created, premiered across the world, nowhere in the Southern Hemisphere. Even for this stuff, it's only available in the US and the UK. So to get anything around our ends is just so amazing. So for something that's been so exclusive and so popular and is sort of this new wave from the creator economy of things going ultra mainstream, I'm sure people have released books in the past that have like shown up and Kmarts and things, but never have they been so mainstream like Sides of the Sidemen, which I've got a video in the works, or in the Prime here, just in mainstream stores, or Mr. Beastberg and our opening mainstream restaurants and things like this. It's a whole new shift. It'll be fascinating to see what comes out of it, because really the potential here is creators dominating because they are the marketing funnels for every business in existence now, because why would you choose having you know, Superman on the Hershey's bar versus Mr. Beast? If there's an option there, you're going to choose the one that's basically from a friend rather than a stranger. Mr. Beast's face, if you watch him every single time you upload a video, it becomes friend-like. It's different if it's a human connection that you've built with someone in their product. If I hate this stuff, can I be honest? Expose the truth. It can go wider. 25 calories, 10% coconut water. But it's interesting how this is advertised as a direct competitor to Gatorade and then Mr. Beast's Feastables is a direct competitor to Hershey's but they very much vocally say it. He is what we're equivalent to and why we're better. I guess the marketing works, because that's about as vibe, that, that's what you spot on a shelf. It's kind of like, very much follows this sort of design, like Simon Langster's book, where if it's on a shelf, you're gonna find it. Oh, satisfying. It's like the car doors, right? They always try and get that, or you can smell it. Offhand, I'm glad it's not blue like the bottle. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that probably comes across as more, uh, Minty. Yeah, and very strong of like flat coloring, flat artificial coloring. Yeah, that's right. Blue raspberry. I don't know how that works. And we got grape, which I generally don't like, but maybe this one's a bit more of like the actual. Oh, no. Ooh, nearly doubled up. This is orange. Yeah, I already opened it. <laughs> but at least one of the advertising points is that it's not sticky like Gatorade. It doesn't have a lot of sugar in it. Or oh, look at that. It's like a traffic light, just minus the green. Okay. Yeah, but this is the blue raspberry. Smells nice. It does. Tastes like a Zupa Duper. I don't know what a Zupa Duper is. It's the first thing I noticed the smell. Quite fruity. The other thing that I didn't mind is that it didn't have bubbles. Mm. Kind of nice though. It tastes like that, like a watermelon water. I don't know if I would buy it outright just because I like normal water. I don't like the idea of getting bored of normal water, but it's very nice. Great. Okay. No smell. A bit of taste, not strong. It's a touch of grape. Yeah, there, 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 was, there was no smell really. Very thinned out cordial. Mm. Yeah, except without the sugary sweetness of it. True, that always ruins it when you like afterwards. Okay, but well, again, fruity, but different fruity. And then orange. A 
bit of smell, not as strong as the blue. Mm, this one doesn't really do it for me. I don't mind it, but it doesn't have much of a taste. It's like a, once again, a very watered down. Yeah. It doesn't taste uh, orangey. I, I actually like these. These ones, mm -hmm. just a matter of, of personal preference. They're all good, but I wouldn't buy this one. I would pour this one if I was someone's house. This I would buy most likely, the blue raspberry. But what do you think that cost me in Australia for them smuggling it in? What do you think the premium was? Uh, 10 bucks a bottle? 15. <laughs> We're looking at $45. You can buy a decent bottle of wine in Australia for $15. But I mean, <laughs> I'm still surprised. Like, I asked the dude, I'm like, how did you get into Australia? He didn't want to give me secrets. <laughs> and he was just saying, yeah, you know, it's usually three bucks in the US, but here it's going to cost you 15. I'm like, you're the one selling it to me. That's it's interesting that it doesn't really have other branding than the drink. What do you mean? Well, it's not using the branding of its big promoter. Is that because the benefit is that if you just have a face on it, does that limit it to only the people who like that face? Well, but you can do it obviously in lots of subtle ways, but by not having that. But potentially it's associated enough that if people see it, it's so recognizable. Yeah, and, and long term you can sell it, you can whatever, and it doesn't suffer any brand damage. They can sell it off to if Gatorade wants to acquire them or mm. IPO it. Or even you know, Coca-Cola trying to get into all sorts of Northern Coke drinks. As of October, it already surpassed 100 million sold bottles. Wow. And when did it launch? And is estimated to have already 1% market share of the hydration category in October. I guess he doesn't need to put his face on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. For people who would actually care enough to want to go out and buy it, they will automatically recognize it. Hmm. But for those who are like, oh, I recognize their face, they're not the ones who will, will put in the effort to be like, oh, I'll get it anyway. So for them, that tiny portion doesn't really matter. So then you're marketing to people who are like, oh, I want something interesting and I know them and want to get their thing. Okay, well, no, that's, to be honest, I hadn't expected much because I mm. don't particularly like Gatorade and all of that stuff. But at least two of these, um, yeah, I would buy them. How many more flavors they got? They got like a green, so I guess that's like a lime, and then they got a Dutch flag. Or oh, no, that's actually a Luxembourg flag. Same. Oh, the Luxembourg light blue. Dutch is dark blue. And I think what helped get some momentum behind it is the fact that it was co-founded by two people that previously had a rivalry, so already had that attention and eyes on it. So it's like, okay, these two people coming together, you've got both geographies, Europe and America, means you've got double whammy there. And it's like, okay, these people literally fought two boxing matches against each other and now in business together. Sup, mom? And they sponsored Arsenal in July, which is just mental. They haven't taken cash out, they just keep putting it back in, obviously doing so well, why would you? Well, certainly in the initial stages, you don't yeah. want to take out cash. And fast moving consumer goods are always very good at defining the category in a way that uh, <laughs> benefits them. <laughs> and as well, the benefit of these sorts of products is you buy it multiple times a week. Where if someone buys a shirt or a book, you buy that once and never buy it again. You know, having Beast Burger, Feastables, this, repeat customers over and over and you've got customer loyalty and then they maybe share it with their friends and it's self-perpetuating. So very, very smart. But it's cool to have it in your hands though. It's like the sort of thing I remember when uh, Mythbusters came to town, it was this weird feeling when we went to see their show of like someone you'd seen on TV so much is like standing there and you're like, they're real. Or like Penn and Teller when we saw them at the start of the year. So when will they be officially imported into the country? Probably whenever they can keep up with the yeah, but probably once some of the hype dies down, it'll get easier because you know, it'll be the peak and then everyone's like, oh, I've had it once and then the consistent customers will stay. But then you can slowly expand to other countries without the hype because people will be like, hell yeah, but it's it won't be that overwhelming run into the stores. So it probably makes it a lot easier. If you have to know how many you have to have available to sell before you sell your thing, whether it be a product or a service or you know, you're selling a comedy show or a music, music tour or clothing, how on earth are you meant to know how many <laughs> you actually need to prepare? You look at the equivalents mm. in the past, this sort of drink for this sort of audience with this sort of marketing. But I guess uh, these then, things, they're so know, little. It's still not necessarily, so it's not gonna be precise, mm. but at least you know that, okay, if we sell only this much, we're stuffed. <laughs> Yeah. And if we sell this much, we're breaking all records. So it's probably going to sit somewhere in between, unless we've seen in a lot of countries that it's broken all records, then you know mm. that this becomes almost your bottom line, your minimum that sure. you expect. You get some equivalents to help you do some yeah. estimates. And then obviously it also depends on you know, the equivalence of your distribution channel, where does it sit in terms of the pricing. Was it one of the biggest undersells? Like, yes, these can't keep up with it, but when the Sidemen had the charity match, they sold us out of stadium with like, 20, 30,000 seats, but they had 200,000 people on their website at once, like at one time. Like, we could have sold out Wembley or some massive stadium. They could have done like a pre sale interest thing and seen how many people would have shown up. That would be mental. I'll leave the rest for you to drink. <laughs>